Hello fellow sim racers, I'm doing something a little bit different today which is, well honestly I was supposed to be putting out a new video tonight and it hasn't quite managed to get it finished in time, so I thought I'd just do a bit of a hangout with you guys and edit some of the festival speed photos I took over the weekend and haven't had a chance to have a look at yet. It's not really about the photo editing, it's more about just having a hangout and, and chat with everyone in chat. So um, yeah, if you've got any questions, uh, get them in the chat and we'll we'll get going with it. But uh, but for now, I'm going to crack on with uh, this Lance here. I took I took quite a lot of photos at Festival of Speed, as you would expect. I went on the Sunday, which was honestly a mistake. It pissed down with rain all day. Um, so well, you'll see through the photos, it's pretty miserable. Um, so yeah, I've only got photos up until about I think one o'clock in the afternoon. Hey everyone, uh, hey Mike in chat, Hot Lettuce, Ernie Gaming, well lots of people in already, that's cool. Um, yeah, you'll see I only got to about lunchtime before the camera started playing up a bit and I got a bit, uh, well I gave up, I got a bit a bit antsy, it's an expensive camera and uh, it's supposed to be weather sealed and so are the lenses but you know, I, am I, for those that know I used to work as a professional photographer many years ago and all of my work was very much indoors so uh, I've never really trusted weather sealing. <laughs> Anyway, so how is everyone in chat today? That's the uh, that's the first important question. I'm going to see. Uh, uh, first batch of photos are all from the paddock area, so um, it was pretty overcast, which is nice even lighting. But you end up with um, some quite bad. It's like the areas on the left of the image are really uh, well exposed, but the area, areas at the back where it's covered up are quite dark. So we're going to try and pull some of that out in the. The shadows without losing too much detail it's not looking too bad actually this uh this isn't really um supposed to be an editing tutorial so if i start talking too much editing stuff then uh, i apologize you'll have to ask more interesting questions in chat uh we've got a couple um yeah opening the stream and seeing my favorite car ever yeah there's a couple of nice uh lanciers to start with they they were parked absolutely nearest the car park i was at so there's no there's no rhyme or reason other than this is the order i went around the festival of speed um, Mike, you have the Sim Racing Six Hundred Four in the chat. You have the best Instagram in Sim Racing. I'm jealous of your experiences. That's uh, that's really kind of you, Mike. I think I probably have the best one because I don't take selfies. Everyone else takes selfies. No one wants that, and I do get to go to some cool events. Um, may I ask what camera you're using? I've got currently using a Canon Five DS, which is a bit of a sledgehammer to be honest. So you don't need anything like that. I bought it at the tail end of my uh, professional career um it's 50 megapixel which is totally not necessary uh the lenses i took to goodwood yeah that's a really good question mike um basically uh i do most of my motorsport stuff with a sigma 150 to 600 mil lens which is huge amount of range which is great what i didn't appreciate or didn't really think about to be honest is festival of speed everything's really close so even at 150 millimeters it was a bit bit long a nice 70 to 200 would have been fast more sensible i also took my 24 to 70 which is what all the stuff in the paddocks for but it didn't mean i had a big gap between 70 and 150 where thing was a bit of a problem to be honest um yeah where, where there's always the uh problem doxygnosis um if that's how you pronounce your name. Uh, to be honest, overcast like this is great. Uh, you know, it's great for photography, but, um, you know, you don't get harsh shadows. Let's see if we can do a... Um, done that the wrong way around, haven't I? Let's see if we can just pull a bit of exposure up towards the back of the image, just because it's so weird across the whole thing. I don't know if it's... Yeah, it's not too bad. We can get away with faking that. So I'm going to at least try and get get one of these images edited before I go back and do do more questions because otherwise I'm not going to achieve anything of any any value. As I said, I'm not really my my professional career was doing uh, studio stuff, so this is not my area of expertise at all. Really, you know, going outside is not my uh, not my forte. So I just uh, I do what I like. Uh, just put I think a little bit of. Uh, yet on that there we go we're happy with that wow a whole bunch of other questions in chat <laughs> five minute warning sorry gluten free um i did say seven uh and i was 10 minutes late so that's fine yeah that seventh photo is a c9 we're getting there man we're getting there uh we're happy with the uh the the delta integrale there and uh yeah another lance here imagine that uh lots of uh well there weren't lots of lances actually i think it was only the two 
Uh, we're gonna have to do the same trick with this, I think, and just add a little bit of. See if we can just add a little bit of exposure across to the back of the image because of the shadow from the the tent they were in. It's only about half a stop down or something, but it just makes it look a bit weird, to be honest. Uh, loads more questions. Join the Hangout stream. Get treated to an image of a Martini in <laughs> Integrale. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much how this is going to go, man. I don't know if you've ever been to Festival of Speed or, or anything like it, but um, man, there's some nice cars. Uh, Valkyrie, and I'm using uh, Lightroom. Uh, you know, it's just... Uh, it's basically all the Photoshop tools that, that photo editors use just sort of thrown in one place, which is which is nice. I think we need to uh, pull down the highlights a little bit there. This is my uh, my mistake for trying to expose a, a pretty tricky image actually, in terms of sort of balance of exposure. Let's just let's just even it out massively. You've got quite a problem with this image is you've got a massive amount of the. Um, the black area in the back and this huge white white bonnet at the front so getting it so it's not so it just looks punchy and not completely ridiculous is is pretty bad um other image you've uh, other image other problem you've got at somewhere like festival of speed is uh it's properly packed it is uh it's rammed i mean i i got there at half past six in the morning uh and these photos would have been not long after i can't be bothered to look at the uh, the metadata to find out but this would have been you know half six seven o'clock ish uh and even then you're having to jostle for position and, and peak ground barriers and stuff to to get these photos so that the crops are what the crops are i'm afraid but uh you know you come away with some nice pictures of some uh, some cars which is always good we're uh how's the exposure compared to that see that's a bit lighter overall let's uh let's have a bit bring a bit more out in the shadows just to Make it a bit less uh, crunch to the bottom. Ah, we've got a whole bunch more in the chat. What's going on? Uh, biggest piece of advice I'd give anyone trying to do photo photography in particular. Snowy conditions and also just generally is get a nice ND filter. Also nice photos, Chris. Yeah, um, ND filters would have been uh, not much use in the uh, the lighting conditions I had because we were sort of struggling for exposure anyway. But in uh, particularly... Uh, mo most photography just so you can manipulate the um the balance between shutter speed and um your your aperture setting that's definitely a good piece of advice there um is that the car that crashed i didn't see um the s4 crash uh, i missed the i had to i had to go to another event in the last sort of couple of hours so i didn't stay until the afternoon on sunday um i would be very sad if it did now onto something a bit uh, a bit more American. This is the 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 Tramzam uh, Tramzam Transam uh, Audi. Uh, they had the IMSA one as well. Uh, uh, they both ran during the what am I doing? Both ran during uh, one of the sessions in the middle of the day. It looked absolutely amazing. The uh, the uh, IMSA one in particular is just just ridiculous. Lovely car, as you can see. I slightly overexposed the uh, the front of the image. So let's just get it balanced out. A little bit and then uh, the beauty of raw is you can make up for my complete lack of getting it right on the day by uh, pulling it back a bit I mean that that's the the nice thing about modern DSLRs is the amount of um, dynamic range you've got I mean it's still nowhere near uh, what you used to get on film but you can get away with a lot more than you used to be able to. I, I started out learning on film at university and, and going over to digital was, was very hard. I ended up spending a lot of the first part of my professional life underexposing everything by about two thirds of a stop because I just didn't trust uh, the sort of end of the, that end of the dynamic range. Anyway, I'm wittering on completely. Uh, what's going on in chat? Would you say that Adobe's new subscription-based model is good for beginners or just for those that have photography as their main interest? Great question. I'm gonna, I, I can get on my soapbox about Adobe. <laughs> I'm not going to get any of these pictures edited, am I? Um, yeah, I, I've been in the Adobe ecosystem for two decades now, give or take. Uh, I don't like subscription-based software. I don't think anyone does really, do they? Uh, I'm paying currently, for, for what I need, about 60 quid a month for Adobe Creative Suite, which is fine because I'm using it professionally in my day job. Uh, as well as doing this, the video editing, all the graphic design for the sim racing channel, and everything else, 
for me, 60 quid a month is actually worthwhile. I, I don't have a problem with that. But it's 60 quid a month compared to paying £400 every or £350 for the entirety of Creative Suite. And you'd, you know, you'd pay that every couple of years, maybe. So, yeah, it's more it's much more expensive. Software's all going that way. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's even more expensive than iRacing. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not great. Right. Uh, I haven't quite got the, uh, the balance right there, have I? I just need a little bit more to the back. This is a, a tricky photo. I don't know why I'm persevering with it other than um, the fact that it's a really cool car. I wonder what people that don't know anything about DSLRs think about shutter speed and aperture. Uh, I don't know. You'll, you'll have to ask them. Um, you know, uh, to be honest, a lot of the time, you know, when I'm not taking photos at, at really cool events, the stuff I get off my phone is excellent. Um, you know, there's a there's sort of a bit of a mantra that the, you know, the best camera is the one you have on you. Um, you know, photographers like to say that a lot. And I, I firmly believe that because ooh, slipping on the controls a bit there. It's uh, tricky exposure, this one. Yeah, the stuff you get off the phone these days is fantastic. But like, most of the, the Monza video I did was was phone footage. I took my DSLR with me. But because everything was happening so quickly, I didn't really have time to to sort of faff about and keep getting the DSLR set up. You know, I took a, a gimbal with me and all sorts of stuff. And it just takes too long to, to get everything set up. When when you're doing another job, you know, I wasn't there to be a photographer or a videographer or, or what have you. So, um, you know, it just uh, I'm a firm believer of, of the phone as, as, as a tool. Here we go. It, here's something... Uh, Still a bit Audi flavoured, but uh, probably a bit more interest to, to the Europeans in the room. I hate iRacing for the subscription stuff. I paid 40 euros already and then loads of crashes of video call and iRacing support didn't even know what was wrong. Yeah, I mean, I think even iRacing's biggest fans dislike the the pay the pay model because, you know, it just it is what it is, isn't it? You know, they've they've been very successful with it. Uh, and as, as I said, software with a service, a software as a service even is is just becoming the new norm. So, you know, what can you do? Uh, while they've got no real direct competitors, then uh, there's not, you know, there's not a lot that any of us are going to be able to to really do with uh, to to do about it. I suspect if ACC get their act together and the online side of things improves. Uh, you know, maybe iRacing will have to adapt. But, you know, ACC is still pretty niche. It's a European, you know, it's a European only series. So it's going to have a largely European audience, I would have thought. Here we go. This is uh, this is my kind of thing. I tell you what, I haven't driven the oh, what was it, DRM Revival mod in a long time. Um, I know it's had a bunch of updates. Has anyone um, tried it in the last in a few months or so? Ooh. Getting that all wrong. Again, you've got really tricky lighting conditions. You can see how exposed the sort of uh, the, the nose of the car is and how dark it was to the back of the garage. You know, there's only so much you can fake it. You know, if you pull pull the exposure the whole way up, it starts to look really, really fake. But I don't mind, I don't mind a little bit of fall off, you know, it gives the image some depth. Just being picky, really. Uh, what's going on in chat? Um, well, loads. Uh, I bought the Le Mans 24 hour track and never drove it. Same for the Nordschleifer. Well, that's, I mean, that's just, that, that's just bad. Uh, you know, two of the, the best tracks in, in racing. You should find some time to do them. You're a brave man trying to bring up iRacing pay model on your channel, Chris. I Am I? Is it, is it that controversial? I, I don't know. I think, I think everyone hates the iRacing pay model. Even iRacing's biggest fans, and if they don't, you know, they need to go and see a doctor of some description. You know, at the, the end of the day, no one likes having to continuously pay for things. Maybe they do. Maybe maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe it's just a bit subversive to think that once you've paid for something, you should just get to keep it. But you know, what? I, I don't like, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of of Spotify and Netflix and, you know, I like the convenience side of it, but I quite like, you know, owning things. You know, I've still got a load of vinyl, so, you know, what do I know? 
I'm on another planet, I think. I certainly am because I can't find the tool I'm looking for, which is just uh, yeah, just keep. Hey, Cybersys, how's it going, man? Um, what's the gas bottle at the back? Uh, it just looked like an acetylene uh, torch. I'm just, you know, it's a Zaxby Capri. It's going to be crashed into some things. It's going to need some welding, isn't it? Probably a fire extinguisher. Yeah, well, it could be a fire extinguisher as, uh, you know, it's going to crash into things and need to be welded, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, this is uh, definitely my speed. Again, you know, you can see how, how much the... Let's see if we can crop out that horrible uh, sort of tent pole on the right there yeah, not all of it as I said you have to sort of duck under the barriers and uh, you know the velvet ropes in front of some of these sort of several million pound cars so uh, you sort of get the crops you get sometimes have you ever tried the trick with tilt shift where you turn the car show picks into photos and they look like they're super realistic toy cars yeah yeah I, I did something like that when I when I was at university um, it's become really it's, it, it, I think it's uh, it's become quite a popular technique actually how are we doing here just trying to I don't think I want to bring that up too much actually it's, uh, I like a bit of depth there yeah I think BMW actually probably didn't have the best showing of everyone there there was uh, whole bunch of great Audi stuff, whole bunch of great, um, oh, the Formula One stuff this year was excellent because they were doing a, a Michael Schumacher uh, retrospective. So super, super great uh, Formula One representation, including uh, if anyone watched the footage, they'll know about this, but watching Damon drive uh, Michael Schumacher's 1994 Benetton, that was uh, a really interesting uh, setup they had there you know i think lots of jokes went around the internet about him uh him looking for for option 13 you know for the traction control on the <laughs> steering wheel but he only got halfway up the hill i was i was um i was stood at Malcolm uh at that point and uh it just sort of saw him peel away into the into the paddock he was driving on slicks on a very wet track though so you know uh, i guess that's why it was Oh wow, loads of uh, loads of stuff in the chat. I almost own all of Ice Racing content. And never play with it. Waiting on the AI price model does suck. That yeah, I'm waiting on the AI. I have the same. I have the same sort of issue. I love iRacing. racing. I genuinely do, and I think that it's important that I I mention that whenever I'm I'm critical of, of some of this stuff. But um, I have I own a lot of the content I bought for really specific things, uh, and without AI to race against. Uh, I can't justify using a lot of it for the for the channel, so I always have to choose between: do I want to just do eye racing stuff for fun, or do I want to uh, let's just straighten that up a little bit, or do I want to uh, make content for the channel? And it's always the channel that has to sort of take precedence there, which means every time I do jump into eye racing, I have to buy you know I'll pick up a new uh league or whatever and have to buy another you know 50 quids worth of content and then it only gets used for a few weeks and it's such a such a bad investment for me but you know oh well c'est la vie i only answered one question there didn't i, I just ignored the rest i got on the iRacing soapbox again uh do, 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 do. in a pay-to-play race room you got it quite right you buy it you own it Looking to buy that. Yeah, I don't mind the race room model. It's cheaper. You get to keep everything. You don't have to pay a subscription. Um, uh, you know, it, it sort of. I guess it's broadly equivalent to you know just buying DLC, really, isn't it? And you know, every racing sim I I end up uh, buying, I buy plenty of DLC for because more cars is good, more tracks is good. You know, it doesn't even matter what it is. You know, even with race room, you know, they'll release some obscure you know uh, eastern european track i've never heard of and I was like, oh, i've got to have that yeah this isn't the uh this isn't gonna win any prizes this photo but you know the this was uh, pretty much lying down on the floor underneath uh underneath a velvet rope so i can be forgiven for that let's see if we can give it a bit more drama by adding a bit of vignette yeah there you go that's passable let's move on to something a bit more uh pointy Again, we got they got the same problem with uh, 
same problem with having to sort of poke around ropes here. So I think we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna go for this one of the MP44. Uh, Valkyrie asks, "What's your favourite car in ACC?" Uh, McLaren. There you go. Uh, I think it, it genuinely is my favourite. I really enjoy the way it drives. Uh, it was probably the most immediate to start with for me, and it stuck with me. I don't. It's not the fastest. Uh, I think I'm more competitive in things like the Lamborghini and the the Lexus, but it's a McLaren. I'm from just down the road from Woking. I, I have to. So yeah, this is the the Honda stand. I think they pretty much just brought the two bikes and the MP44. But uh, you know, you don't really need anything else, do you? Well, I don't. I'll tell you what was weird I was watching some of the '90s Formula One cars on uh, modern Pirelli tires. That that didn't look right at all. Uh, I assume it's their their sort of normal demonstration tires, but it's bizarre. Looking at uh, you know Benetton B one nine four on you know twenty nineteen <laughs> Pirelli's bizarre. Oh, I do like that car. I think I think Honda must own this chassis because I don't think it's the one that the McLaren bring out from time to time. I could be wrong. I'm sure someone in chat will uh, be able to correct me on that. Uh, in race room. Oh, wow. Lots of questions. Just bought Wreckfest. I love Wreckfest, Mr. Flinney. Uh, Mr. Flinney? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, is that a Welsh name? It has to be Welsh. If you've got a, 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 a P, an F, an L, and a Y, and an H in five letters, then uh, it's beyond my pay grade trying to work out how to pronounce that. There was a velvet cord in front of the C9. Yeah, there was a velvet cord in front of most of these cars, man. Oh, on Saturday there wasn't. Yeah, I think they just. Uh, I think some of the barriers were moved around. Uh, no, it was uh, Ricochet. I understand. Yeah, there were two different C9s. There was one. Uh, this one from later didn't have a velvet rope in front of it. The other one did. So, and I managed to get around the back of that one. Uh, there was a C11 somewhere as well. I'm not sure if I've got any photos of that. What's my overall favourite car in sim racing? Um, uh, Porsche 962 in. Assetto Corsa. I don't think it's necessarily the best represented Group C car in sim racing, but it's my favourite. Uh, you know, I'm a big uh, Porsche 962 fan. I don't know if you're going to be able to. No, I'm not going to show that off yet. But I've just got a, I've got a new tattoo of uh, uh, Stefan Beloff to celebrate Stefan Beloff's 956 lap of the Nordschleife. But I'm not going to show that yet. I'm going to show it on. Uh, a video at a later date. I think it's not quite healed yet, so uh, I'd rather do it justice. A friend of mine's a tattoo artist and did it for me, and I don't think he'd appreciate me uh, showing it like half healed. So, Benetton on Pirelli's Pixar. It didn't have. I do have that. Uh, let's just just uh, let's give up on the idea of. There you go. Pirelli slicks on a Benetton B one nine four. With Damon Hill driving it. I mean, just there's everything is wrong about that picture. <laughs> quite right though i think they do look quite good on it and uh, i do like the the story behind damon driving the the car that sort of denied him the championship in that contentious way so yeah uh this is i think this photo is only really in here because i love the car this is the 1990 leighton house march the the first one i think knew he did from scratch and uh you know i just uh, it punched above its weight so hard. I think they managed to... Uh, they were running 1-2 at Paul Ricard, I think. That was that was great. So, yeah, let's get back on to some more Sauber Mercedes because that uh, Leighton House photo wasn't worth persevering with, I don't think. I had already gone through and done a bit of a... just a skim to get rid of all the uh, complete dross. Uh, what else is going on in chat? Cool to see it has the original Marlboro livery too. Yeah, they haven't taken off the cigarette branding on that. Um, well then, what's the best Group C car in sim racing then? Ah, that's uh, that's a tough one. I, I set myself up for that, didn't I, by saying I don't think it's necessarily the best Group C car. I don't think the perfect Group C car has been made, actually. I like the stuff in Race Room. I think that feels feels right to me now it doesn't mean it's necessarily accurate but you know speak i spoke to simon uh who did the physics on it at length before i, I did that review and you know he talked about some of the the lengths they went to to get everything 
as right as they believed they could as i'm sure all sim racing developers do but the, that, that the 962 in that feels really good but it doesn't have i prefer the force feedback in assetto corsa the sound in that one in the race room one's far better i like the way the uh the nissan in iRacing drives i know it's it's technically gtp not group c but you know same kettle of fish really so yeah uh, i'm sitting on the fence a bit there i quite like the the r factor pack as well although i'm not sure the tire model necessarily is uh what i'm uh, i'm really enjoying at the moment i think they've changed it in a way that i'm i'm not liking everything's a bit too slidey Prillies on that car look so wrong. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, no VR, no buy. Yeah, <laughs> well done, Mike. <laughs> I'd love to have VR support in Wreckfest. Yeah, um, definitely, yeah. There you go. My favourite group C in sim racing is the C11 for R Factor 2. Yeah, I, I think that's probably, probably one of mine. I think there are elements of all of them that are really good, but I just don't think anything's really quite nailed the, oh my God, this is scary but also having that feeling of well this has got huge amounts of downforce at the same time uh they seem to go into one of two categories they're like the for example the the mazda in assetto corsa is just a terrifying car at all times uh and it never feels like it's got you know hundreds uh hundreds and hundreds of kilos of downforce at any point um or they fall into the category of the 962 in assetto corsa which i guess is probably a bit easy to drive it is it's quite understeery but then again you know the real thing was it had a, a spool diff so it's always going to want to push on corner entry uh what irl series are you following closest right now actually it's been really tough this year uh last year i i didn't miss a single um weather tech sports car championship race or an imsa race or uh, and I watched a lot of the Formula One, but this year, because I've been traveling a lot and having to go to a lot more of, you know, wrong way around again, a uh, lot more of, uh, been a lot busier with events this year. It's It's been tough. I'm still following Blancpain, although the endurance events, because I'm having to attend them, I, I don't think I've watched any of them. I, I watched the race highlights for Paul Ricard just because Bentley won and I, I had to know how that came about as uh, I'm a bit of a Bentley fan. And if there are any other Bentley fans, then if I ever get to the midsection of this, there are about a hundred Bentleys. So uh, I exaggerate slightly, but there are there are a lot of Bentleys. I think we just pulled up the shadows a little bit too much there. I don't think it's controversial to say that the old Aston Martin looked better. Anyone in the anyone in the chat prefer the new Aston? I'm not. You know, it's 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 okay to have an opinion that disagrees. I mean, you'll be wrong, but it's okay to at least express it. Just think, there's something classic about that, and the nose on the the new ones just a bit takes a little bit more getting used to for my liking. Don't know why I took that photo. Speaking of Astons, it's not really an Aston, is it? It's the it was made by Nimrod, wasn't it? Not not Aston Martin. But uh, it's got Aston Martin written all over it, so so we'll go with that as a title. Ooh, that was not not how I intended that to work. Actually, that's not too bad in the back. It's just that really overexposed nose there, isn't it? Let's just bring everything down a little bit. F2 is good to watch. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch uh, much F2 this year. I watched, I think, Spain. That might be it. If we're talking gro Group C, let's not forget Project Cars 2. Oh, don't do that, VMAX, Daniel. We were all having a nice time. There's no need for... Uh, there's no need to bring that up. Um, our motorsport livery on the V12 Vantage is very underrated. Yeah, it's it's a classic, isn't it? I, th I think that's a, a really sorted car. I mean, they've drawn all over it. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, I think that's uh, that's a bit of a classic. I think people will be uh, remembering that in in years to come. You know, given that cigarette companies can't doodle all over cars now, you've got to got to find interesting ways to to keep it fresh. This Nimrod's a weird looking car. Was it Group C two? Was it a C two car rather than a Group C? 
looks it. If it wasn't a Group C2 car, then it was... Does it say at the top? No, it doesn't. Um, if it wasn't a Group C2 car, then it looks like it didn't have nearly enough aero to keep up with the, the 956s. I know it wasn't competitive at all, but I'm drawing a blank on whether uh, it was C2 or not. Let's have a bit of... Uh, there we go, that's better. Now for something much better looking. Uh, oh, let's let's do some questions in chat first. Uh, looks like an 80 year old librarian. What? <laughs> Are you talking about the the Nimrod? Uh, well, I don't know. This this doesn't look like an 80 year old librarian. This looks like perfection. So Red Bull, uh, Red Bull also had Aston Martin written all over it. <laughs> yes, it did. Um, and still do. Hey, Dave, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining in the chat. F2 car gets more camera time than F1.5. It feels it's terrible. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. It was Group C2. Sim racing, uh, Mike. I thought it was Group C2 rather than Group C, um, as in the the lower class. I, c I could be wrong. If it was if it was actual Group uh, if it was C1, then uh, yeah, you can see why it was so slow. <laughs> oh, this is this is a car. I think this is the uh, DBR. Three, not the DBR one that's in Project Cars that I always every time anyone bashes Project Cars two, I tell them just go and drive the DBR one because it's it's magnificent. There's no you know uh, I'm not a huge defender of Project Cars two. There's a lot about it I don't like, but every time I get in this car or oh, the DBR one the predecessor, uh, I have a very very good time. And you know at the end of the day we're all here to have fun, allegedly. You wouldn't believe that if you uh, go and participate in uh, threads on any of the forums, though, would you? <laughs> oh, that's a that's a car. That's a proper car. Yeah, well, that's a proper car as well. Oh, Group C two, bad pun. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, you uh, you lost me there, mate. Oh, hey, hey, AJ, how you doing, man? Uh, first, uh, Aston, you head up. Yeah, yeah, the the. Um, Oh, what you didn't like? You don't like the um, don't like the the V twelve Vantage. How can you not like that, Valkyrian? What's wrong with you? I mean, just, oh, just I'm I'm incredulous. I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, you know, I don't want to get get angry with people in the chat for expressing an opinion, but jeez. I mean, that's just wrong think, isn't it? Now I think I oh, know I love the I love the V12 Vantage and not just because I'm British, although I suspect that does play into it a bit. It was the first car I tried when I got to to Monza and tried the the build. I think they were calling it 0.8 at the time of Assetto Corsa Competizione, just because I wanted to drive that car because it looks great, it sounds great, and uh, yeah, I like it. I prefer this in a set of course of competizione. I don't think it'd be very competitive, but oh, I don't think I'd care. I do enjoy driving in uh, in AC. I actually prefer the nine oh eight, um, the earlier car. Though the the three cars they've got of that era, the GT forty, the nine oh eight, and the three thirty P four, are all just ridiculously beautiful cars. Just. Some of the best looking cars ever made. Let's just a bit more. Ah, I'll put the contrast up there. That's why that's gone wrong. Yeah, if you haven't driven the, the Porsche 908 in in Assetto Corsa, give it a go. It's it's much more friendly than the 917. It's a bit understeery, but it's it's something you can drive for, you know, 90 minutes and not feel like you're going to have a brain hemorrhage when you're done. You know, which the the nine seventeen is is pretty bad. <laughs> you know, it's it's a tough car to drive. It's not as bad as the nine seventeen slash thirty, but you know, not much is. Let's just tighten up that crop at the back. We don't need quite so much of the uh, toolboxes. I haven't cropped any of these for like Instagram squareness yet. That's uh, something I probably should have thought about. But there you go. How's it going, chat? Oh, lots of people saying hi. Um, not much of an opinion just a quick glance it popped into your head <laughs> I'm only pulling your leg man you know you're allowed to dislike the Aston 
I'd be happy if ACC would just add all the teams from all the various Blancpain GT3 series around the world, including US and Asia. Yeah, uh, I, I think I have spoken to them about this and they were a bit non-committal. I suspect the cost of the license isn't going to, wouldn't provide enough return for for Blancpain Asia. Intercontinental GT, you'll have to wait and see. Uh, oh, there's a lot of 917s. If you don't like Porsche 917s, then uh, you're out of luck because this, uh, they had like six or seven of them there. And I photographed them all because why wouldn't you? AC needs more GT4s. Um, yeah, Assetto Corsa needs some GT4s, as does Assetto Corsa Competizione. Um, I'm not go Every time I see anyone from Kunos, I keep telling them GT4s. Um, you know, they obviously SRO run the European GT4 championship so you know they've they've got a foot in the door there and the the euro gt4 races i've seen have been some of the best best racing i mean it's best racing in the same way i really enjoy the formula e in that it's a bit mad a bit crashy but there's lots of overtaking going on there's lots of good racing and it's a bit incident packed and it's never boring you know that's nice and what i like about the gt4 fields is the cars it's the same thing i like about the blanc pan gt series actually the, the gt3 is that the cars are all really really varied you've got lots of different engine types lots of sounds lots of different shapes i mean in the gt4 you've got you've got the ktm crossbow running against like bmw 3 series against like a mclaren 570s against uh, the camaro gt4 which sounds like a, a world war one biplane <laughs> you know there's just oh it's mad it, it's just great to watch i, I, I prefer it at trackside sometimes to the gt3s certainly um but i want to uh what i wanted to go to the uh historic masters at brands hatch a couple of weeks ago but couldn't couldn't make it happen i went last year uh, and that was really good they had the the 1980s formula one and 60s sports car stuff which is mostly old um lolas and, and the like but you know because not too many people are, are actively competing porsche 917s and four gt40s because that would be insane because those are you know multi-million dollar cars now i've uh, i've lost the plot of what i'm doing with this image a bit so let's just what's going on in chat ACC needs GT5 career, then up to GT4, GT3 next year, GT2 cars. Well, GT2 is going to go between GT3, uh, GT4 and GT3, isn't it? So uh, who knows what's going to happen there? Yeah, Pirelli runs, uh, SRO runs the Pirelli World Challenge, GT4 and the TCR. Yeah, they've got a lot of licenses. So if um, they pretty much run all of GT3 in Europe outside of the, the Nürburgring stuff, the VLN and the, the N24 uh, and, you know, some of the national series are, are not SRO. You know, there's a lot there if Kunos want to do it, but it's a question of license costs versus, uh, you know, what they can pull back on it. You know, at the end of the day, if I don't, these numbers are pulled out the top of my head, if 100,000 people buy a set of course of competition, maybe only 10,000 people are going to buy the GT4 add-on. Maybe only 5,000 would buy the British GT Championship add-on. Well, not even 5,000. 12 guys would buy the British GT Championship add-on. I'd buy it twice just to make sure. But, <laughs> you know, you're, uh, it gets risky, I think. That's not a very good crop. Did I get a better one? Oh, such a good-looking car. Uh, we'll, do, we'll progress with the uh, the K for now. Honestly, ACC would be so much content given the amount of cars SRO has racing around the world. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how the licensing deal works, dude. The, to, I, it, my understanding is the license they've got is is for the content you've seen plus the twenty nineteen stuff. You know, if more comes, it will be because they've got options to, uh, you know, they've optioned the other stuff. You know, it's uh, rather than having a concrete agreement there's just uh you know if 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 everything's successful and both parties agree then there's an agreement in principle to do the next bit that that's my assumption that's not a word from kunos i just want to be careful about that because you know sometimes i do have insights and and, and th cool things they've told me and other times i'm just speculating wildly so this is quite a tricky image actually 
wish those guys weren't standing around in the background, but they were there for ages. And uh, since they were looking after the cars, I didn't really feel comfortable telling them to uh, to bugger off. Such a fantastic car. I can't crop out that red bit either. This is uh, in bad times, but, you know, you get the crops you get. Uh, at least we can draw the eye to the to the golf car scheme. There we go, Langheck. That's that, that's the boy. Didn't win, did it though? It was a, a K one. Yeah, was it seventy one? I don't know. I'm uh, drawing a blank. I think it was seventy one. They ran the Langheck because this is probably the same year as the Pink Pig. That's why you never see Toka or BTCC. Yeah, uh, yeah, it did. The whole having to make money on what you do thing is uh, is a is a real shame. Uh, yeah, I think we'd see a lot more. Excuse me, my uh, my chair is uh, is giving me chip. Uh, yeah, you'd see a lot more interesting racing series if uh, you know if business didn't get in the way of it. Uh, I'm on I, I, I've said it before. I'm honestly surprised that some racing sims actually you know managed to turn a profit, let alone break even. So, uh, you know, I think R Factor 2 was the one I said recently, you know, you, you look at the size of the player base, they must be selling to most, of, a lot of the player base to, to make that make money. You know, I've, you know, having spoken to people in the industry about the kind of figures that get bandied around for some of these licenses, it's crazy. I would, I, you know, knowing what I know, I wouldn't, um, I sure as hell wouldn't uh, go into the sim racing business. <laughs> I do like the Langheck. I massively prefer the look of it to the to the K. I know it's not as iconic, but flowing lines. It's it, it's Le Mans, isn't it? It's a it's a Le Mans car. That's what they're supposed to look like. We might. No, I was about to say we might be getting near. Oh, I had two of the. Uh, oh, the second one was a much better crop, wasn't it? Yeah, well, <laughs> let's copy the. Uh, Let's cheat and copy the develop settings across. I wish I was paying attention. I would have caught that. Ooh. Oh, well, that, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that too much because I've just seen what's coming up and uh, no one's going to be sad about having to see that. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> wow, lots going on in chat. Uh, yeah, lots of nine one sevens. I think we're done with the nine one sevens now. They're, oh, they're, sorry, nine seventeen. What I'm talking about, it's a Porsche. Uh, we got the nine seventeen thirty in a minute. Still have my box copy of Toka Two. I need to get hold of a PlayStation and Toka Two. I've been uh, I've been jonesing for it recently. I want to. I'm not just going to do what I did as a kid and just unlock the tank straight away, because that's what you do. Um, I think most companies work licensing costs on a case-by-case -case basis, probably based on sales. Yeah, definitely. Chris, I want to try the DBR1 in Project Cars 2 per your recommendation. What track can you recommend? Uh, Monza. Uh, Monza 1967 or 1963 or whatever version it is. Uh, don't worry about the version with the, the banking. Well, you can if you want, but just the normal sort of uh, boot-shaped Monza circuit is fantastic for it. The fast corners, it's right on the edge of grip. Uh, you still have to brake quite a lot for the slower, the slower corners, the Lesmos, and it's you're just drifting a 1957 vintage uh, shoebox on wheels with a glorious Aston Martin engine in the front of it. It sounds great. Set it to late afternoons, the sun's breaking through the trees. Oh, it's just fantastic. Creamy corn cob. Give the latest Norris ring a go over on R R D. Yeah, I saw it earlier. Um, it's a it's an update of the conversion one, I think. So I've I've been using that for a while, but it's pretty flawed, I think. Um, Levity details like no other fun fun sprint track. Yeah, the uh, yeah the photos looked really good actually. The the old Norris ring was it's pretty ropey, I think. Uh, particularly the the track mesh was super bumpy, but Oh, well, uh, if the new one's good, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I love Norris Ring. Um, it's just one of those completely insane tracks that 
Well, the Germans do insane tracks really well, don't they? I mean, no one in their right mind should drive around the Nordschleife in this day and age, and no one should drive around the Norrisring. You know, it's a tiny little track around the old, you know, Nazi parade ground. It's just no. The, the whole concept's totally balmy, and it's brilliant because of it. You know, they used to race Group C cars there. Group C is just you know, it baffles, completely baffles the mind. That one. I'm uh, I'm not doing very well at this whole photo editing thing because everyone keeps talking about cool sim racing stuff, which was the point. I should remind myself that. That is what I wanted to do. Man, I love this car. No, we're not going to edit that. Ru uh, rubbish crop, sadly. There we go. 9.35 slash 2. I think it's the slash 2, isn't it? It's not the, it's not the Moby Dick. As you can see, let's uh, sort out the background a little. Oh, we've got. See if we can just cheat a bit with this because I don't want to bring up the exposure in the, the big white building. Ooh, that's a bit too much. Let's pull that down. See, a lot of this stream, uh, and I'm not going to look uh, watch it back because I'm well aware it's just going to be looking at a man moving sliders around and going, ooh, that's not right. So, uh, you know, fair play to everyone that's sort of stuck with it. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. Oh, I already cropped this. That was smart of me. How are we doing in chat? Uh, lots of stuff. I'm oh, talking amongst yourselves. That's good. Yeah, Group C at Norris Ring. Yeah, um, mid-80s. I think it was non-championship race some years, a championship race a couple of other years. Uh, Porsche works team skipped it a couple of times but you used to get the privateers go down and you know 25 group C cars C1 and C2 cars going around Norris ring is just nuts there's there's footage on YouTube you should definitely go and watch that uh, right back to editing the image the thing that I'm trying to remember to do This is just making me want to go and do uh, race the DRM stuff again. I know it wasn't everyone's favourite mod, but man, I love those cars. Right, I think that's all we're going to get from this 935. 935. Come on, Chris, it's a Porsche. Pay attention. I lied. We weren't done with the 917s. We got one more. Did everyone see, um, anyone watch the stream and see Lando Norris driving the the McLaren M8 Can-Am car? That was cool, man. Uh, he was not, in the wet on Sunday, he was not mucking about. Which is crazy, given that it's like an 8-litre Chevy engine in it or something, isn't it? <laughs> totally bonkers. Fair play to the guy. I've got a lot of time for Lando, actually. I don't know. I haven't actually spoken to too many um, sim racers about how they feel about Lando. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? I'm a McLaren fan, so you know, kind of either have to like him or hate him. There's no, there's no middle ground there. Let's see if we can just take it. That guy in the background is distracting from the image a little bit. See if we can. Uh, just draw a bit of attention away from that side of the image. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That's no, we don't have to go too mad. Wait, did he actually drive something? Yeah, he... Um, yeah, Lando drove the... McLaren Can-Am car up the hill. You know, which... Uh, I think a commentator's quipped, so it might, might be the first time he's driven a manual car. It's like, oh, come on, guys. It's like, let's... Uh, Let's give him some bloody credit. Oh. Look at that. I did think about uh, just moving that bag from the from the seat, but I didn't think it would be uh, didn't think it'd be appreciated. I was being watched at this stage. <laughs> oh, what a car. What a stupid, mad, brilliant car. Terrifies me in a set of course. Just every time you drive it, it just takes 
it takes like 20 minutes to readjust your senses to from any other car jumping into this just because you've got to be so careful on the throttle and then you've got a break about nine and a half years before the corner turns up you know you, before you start accelerating for the previous corner you've got to be braking for the next one it's in so many ways it's so bad but once you start to get it right it's so crazy rewarding and you know 1300 horsepower of just complete nuttiness Yeah, can you tell I'm a bit of a Porsche fan? I think I just wax lyrical about every Porsche and then talked about how much I like driving them all in uh, sim racing games. So let's get on to something that's not a sports car. Uh, but first, let's you all talk about Lando. Lando just resigned. It makes sense. He's What? <laughs> uh, I really like Lando. He's a refreshing personality to have in F1. He's really down to earth. Yep, I like... You played PUBG against Lando once. <laughs> he confirmed that R Factor 2 was the most complete sim. I'm trying to persuade a third guy. <laughs> Honestly, McLaren F1 is becoming my favourite team on the grid on the back of uh, Lando and the 650S GT3. Cool, man. Yeah, uh, more McLaren fans is a good thing. It's been a tough time for us over the last few years. Uh, to be honest, it's been pretty tough since... Kimmy left if I'm honest because uh, although you know uh, Fernando and Lewis afterwards was a great driver combination it, f it fell apart in seconds uh, and there was just so much turmoil going on with the FIA and and everything else at the time everywhere you know clearly Mosley and uh, Bernie had problems with Ron and vice versa uh, you know it's just, just been a tough time to be a McLaren fan uh, I tell you much easier to be a Tyrrell fan in the early 70s though this is the 73 car I think isn't it um, Tyrrell 006 I think obviously Jackie Stewart's uh, one of his championship winning cars because they had three of them there well there were only three championship winning cars so that would make sense it's mathematically consistent so <laughs> Speaking of championship winning cars, this is the uh, FW19. Not my favourite Williams, actually. I think I preferred the, um, the FW18. I, think. I don't know why. They're pretty similar. I'm not going to lie. I think it's almost entirely because I was, uh, you know, I was 12 or whatever in 19... How old was I? In that? Yeah, I was 12 in 1996. I was a huge Damon fan. Uh, and you know obviously got good memories of watching him win the championship in arguably the most dominant car in formula one history i don't know the ferrari f2004 probably comes pretty close this year's uh mercedes isn't too bad but i think hill won a race by two laps in 1996 and you know then the this year's mercedes sure as hell isn't doing that uh, neither was the F. Uh, neither was the F two thousand and four either. So, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with the FW sixteen. Also, Damon, bless him, and and I loved him at the time. He just, you know, he was uh, a middle of the road driver. Yeah, this is the eighty three Williams. I think I don't think it's that. Yeah, it says in the background there F W eight C. It's not the uh, Rosberg Championship car. Good looking car though. I did like the uh, the short side pods with the radiators at the back. It really dates it to to that couple of year period, sort of eighty two, eighty three. Um, never managed to get around the Nords. Uh, yeah, Zombie Wolf. The key to learning Nordschleife is not to give up every time you crash. I think lots of sim racers are really, really good in the first sector because they totally totally yeah, crash and give up and keep repeating and rinsing and repeating the first sector lots but you know they've probably only got around to dotting a hoe like twice so they don't really know the the second and third parts of the lap so don't forget the mp44 yeah uh yeah good point andrew um that was uh yeah i think i, I discount the mp44 but in the same way i guess i discount the sort of 2014 mercedes because at least both teammates were competitive and it was an internal fight but you're absolutely you're absolutely right that was uh 
you know, 15 out of 16 races. And it should have been 16 out of 16 if not for mechanical failure and a crash. So, yeah, all right, MP44 probably wins over the FW18. Does it? I don't know. Yeah, you've got to start balancing the quality of the drivers, you know, Damon and, and David Coulthard against Prost and Senna. It starts to get messy, doesn't it? Damon's amazing win in Suzuka 94. Yeah, I remember that. So, I mean, as I said, 94, I was 10 at the time, but I remember so much about that race because it was such a such an important part of my, my childhood. Uh, you know, I was a huge Damon fan. I'm watching him win this wet race that it split in two. Uh, it was a big crash and aggregate parts they had to you know it was one on time rather than track position and yeah damon played it perfectly in what was a tricky williams i don't think you know you you watch the struggle senna had early on in the year uh williams didn't adapt very well to not having all the driver aids uh, so you know i think i think damon damon deserves a lot of credit for that drive that was also the year and I, uh, that was the same race where Martin Brundle ran off at, I can't remember where it was, it might have been Spoon, and hit the track recovery vehicle in the same way that happened in 2014. Uh, and it's something he liked to bring up in the, the commentary quite a lot over the years, saying that he didn't like the cranes being on track, you know, it was dangerous. Um, and, you know, that was just something that wasn't really... What am I doing? Something that wasn't really heeded by the FIA, and that's what, what upset me so much about the Bianchi incident is, you know, they should have bloody known better. Anyway, I'm getting into a, you know, slightly neggy and controversial area there, so I'm going to steer away slightly. What do you think, chat? MP44 or FW18? What was the most, uh, what was the most dominant of those two cars? Oh, hey, Drew, uh, hey, Aiden, how you doing, man? I nice see in the chat. FWI had, uh, had the Motate display mounted on the original dash, which is quite weird. I noticed it and started pulling into the paddock. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to to snoop back around some of these. I, I meant to come back later in the day, but I spent so long out in the rain that I just sort of, by the time I sort of headed back up through the paddock, I was pretty keen to uh, to get back to the car. Also, the car park was getting pretty badly waterlogged and uh, I took the MX-5 down and yeah getting getting up the hill uh to get back out in in that was a bit of an experience fast car went fast one races yeah <laughs> i think that's probably accurate it was it was at the same corner yeah okay it was at 130 i couldn't remember aiden it was it was 20 oh god it wasn't 25 years ago was it that's depressing <laughs> yeah yeah uh, okay so yeah 25 years ago uh, so I thought it was 130 R, but I didn't want to, didn't want to hedge my bets. I was trying to steer away from that subject, wasn't I? Now this is a car. I was a big Montoya fan. Well, I still am, but you know, it's, it's a bit, bit more challenging to see him drive a Formula One car these days. Let's see if we can get rid of that checker plate at the front. No one needs to see that. And we got a whole bunch of the tent we don't need to see as well. I always thought uh, Montoya was entertaining. He was the him between him and Kimi. If those two drivers weren't in Formula One in the sort of two thousand to two thousand and four period, I, I think I'd have given up. Uh, you know, it, it was so obvious at the time that Michael was just that much more. Just that much more, more complete, faster, more committed than any other driver. That you know, at least when you had Montoya and, and Kimi, who, I guess in hindsight, probably weren't quite as <laughs> quite as committed as uh, as Michael, his lordship. But at least they kept it interesting. Was it? I think it was two thousand and one in Brazil. Uh, Montoya throwing a pass up the inside into uh, into the first corner, just a real aggressive Schumacher like pass. I think it really uh, endeared me to him. It's got a lot of affection for the Williamses of that Williamses, William Williams. I, I don't know <laughs> of that era, a bit less endeared to the, the Robo race dev bot. I'm not really sure why I even bothered, but yeah, I'm not 
too fast. Let's move on. This is the um, this is the Supra that was at uh, Nurburgring 24, complete with uh, the gaffer tape, which I quite like. Not the biggest fan of the new Supra. I'm not, I'm not as neggy about it as everyone else, but you know. Uh, let's uh, see what's going on in chat. If Ayrton Senna had lived, I think he would have loved sim racing. Yeah, that's a, an interesting point. Um, don't stop. What's your opinion of the FIA stewards? Yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> I did a video where I touched on some of those things. Saturday and Sunday were almost polar opposites. Yeah, I, I really wish I'd gone on Saturday, man. Let's talk about the Canadian. I'm not talking about the Canadian Grand Prix. It's not happening. Montoya has a museum in Miami. It's worth a visit. Is there anything else worth going to Miami for? Um, I don't know much about Miami other than um, Florida man memes. So, you know, I think it might be a bit of a tough sell just to go and see the Montoya Museum. Some of the close moments this year, intervention vehicles, the N24, yeah. Uh, that, that's something you've definitely got to... Uh, I think it's got to be taken pretty seriously. Uh, it, it should have been prior to the Bianchi accident. We're going back there again, aren't we? You guys are, you guys are dragging me back there. New Super is a Z4. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of it. A lot of it is Toyota, though. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not as, not as neggy as some about it. It's just not, I was never that fussed about the old one, but it just had a, I said the old one, it was the Mark IV, wasn't it, the last one? You know, it just it had something about it that I think this one at present seems to be missing. Let's just try and get a bit of detail. Ooh, that's too much, too much. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm never going to look at this photo again. <laughs> I think we've got uh, some gaffer tape. Yeah, I'm not going to not fussed about editing that. Look at this guy, though. Speaking of controversial topics, this is the uh, 2019 Le Mans winner. I know you guys were all really happy about how that played out. I was there, so it wasn't entirely obvious what was going on. So uh, the controversy didn't really bother me too much. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into that because uh, just negativity. Good looking car though, in a kind of weird alien spaceship sort of way. I don't think this angle particularly flatters it. I do love that they uh, they leave them in race finishing condition and just uh, I guess they just varnish over the dirt. Okay, this probably is probably more technical than just varnish, but. I do, I do like that car. Chris, can you check your DMs at race department? I sent you a five lap sprint and Norris ring in the <laughs> Audi R8 LMP. Yeah, sure, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to do it now, obviously. Toyota Super was brand in, banned in the UK due to emissions, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on the 2021 concept? Well, were you talking about the Formula One, Housey? ACO BOP was the 29 Le Mans winner. <laughs> well, yeah, but also, you know, they're holding Toyota back way more than, you know, without the BOP, Toyota would be winning by 10 or 15 laps. So, yeah, I don't have a lot of time for the, you know, BOP argument, except, except, uh, before you start getting it all, getting angry at me, the ACO did make promises that they make it competitive and then, you know, have totally failed to do that. I don't think, yeah, ACO are, are, have proved they're not great at BOP year in, year out. I mean, look, look at what happened to Aston Martin at Le Mans. You know, I don't, again, not something I want to get into particularly just because I try and keep things positive here. And uh, we're going into all the negative topics, aren't we? But, uh, yeah. IMSA seem to do a decent job of BOP most of the time. You know, there's always controversy. It drivers bitch about it team's bitch about it whatever happens you know i've been um been lucky enough to be hanging around the blanc pan events the endurance events this year and god they're just constantly talking about engineers drivers all they talk about is bop 
you think there are other things to do on a race weekend, but no, they're just complaining about, oh yeah, we'd have won if uh, if it wasn't for the BOP. We'd be uh, 12 seconds a lap quicker if it wasn't. <laughs> but you know what? It produces great racing in both IMSA and Blanc Pam. And it would do in... Um, it would do in WEC if they did it well as well, I think. If I don't look at the chat, none of you can disagree with me. So I'm going to concentrate really hard on editing this image, and then uh, then I, my controversial opinions can't get me in trouble. <laughs> there you go. Nothing controversial about that. It's an Aston Martin DBR1 nailed to a bit of steel. Give Montoya the Toyota seat next year. Uh, yes. Yeah, Aiden, I'm 100% with you on that. I, I really want Montoya to have a, a proper go at the Triple Crown. Uh, ACA BOP was 20. Oh, we've done that. Sorry. Uh, love seeing cars after 24 hour sludge battle. Yeah, it, yeah, it just looks fantastic. Photography related question. What's your approach to getting other photographers or general public out of shot? Um, Sim Contender, it's a combination of uh, waiting uh, and prep and sometimes being having to get your elbows out a little bit you know there are i'm quite a polite guy but you know you're, you're particularly at a race event you'll go you'll stake out a position you'll be ready before a session and some guy will come along and literally stand two inches away you know no concept of personal space will stop you being able to pan and stuff and sometimes you just have to get your elbows out a bit literally in some cases uh people aren't necessarily i think people in a lot of hobbies you get some real uh galaxy brains <laughs> for want of a better word man i love that dbr1 i think they just there's something about those late 50s aston martins that was just right just absolutely right um I don't want to pull up the, the the clouds too much, but short of going into Photoshop and, and layering it up, I, there's not a lot I can do with that for now, so I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just keep this easy. We're not, we're not going to open up Photoshop and start going nuts. Oh, of course, the uh, that's not going to work. There we go. Right, on to some actual moving cars. God, we've been, uh, I've been going for an hour and we haven't even gotten to the moving cars yet. Jeez. It's because you guys are asking really interesting questions, um, which, I don't know, is that surprising? Are you guys surprised you're asking interesting questions? I, I kind of am. Or maybe I'm just surprised that anyone's watching me edit photos. SRO, get BOP done well. Yeah, generally, I think so. Uh, you get a lot. You get a variety of winners throughout the year. So either they get the BOP wrong every time and just keep changing it, or or it's done quite well. My bucket list experience: the main endurance races, twenty four hours of Nurburgring, twenty four hours of Le Mans, twelve hours of Bathurst. Yeah, Jerry, I'm 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 definitely on that one. Uh, I did Le Mans this year. I'm going to Spa in a couple of weeks' time, which I'm really looking forward to. Like probably more than I was looking forward to Le Mans. Uh, I, obviously, going there for work, which is nice. I really really enjoy doing the sro esport commentary with with paul um you know the race department guys are such a great group of people uh bram and paul and, and steve the uh who you know uh, does all the photography and videography stuff for them just uh yeah great it's just just such a good laugh and uh you know all the kunos guys are usually there as well and um ak informatica the uh events company that are doing the simulators and some of the technical stuff are, are really good. So yeah, this car is uh, Napier Railton. I think it's a land speed record car. Um, I think I did make some notes about some of these oddballs that I don't really know about, but I didn't make any notes about that. So this is, uh, yeah, silver. Good looking car. Uh, I've got some photos of it on the move later as well. It's just... I can tell you, having stood next to it for a couple of minutes while waiting to cross this road while it was idling, the amount of unburnt petrol uh, coming out of it was absolutely astounding. Yeah, let's give you some insight into to how wet it was. Let's get Captain Selfie out of this photo. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to be in it. We're gonna have to. Uh, I kind of want the umbrella guy in it. I think we might be. Uh, Uh, 
we might have to do a bit of light Photoshop later on this, but that's uh, that, that's a problem for future Chris. He's got a lot of problems coming his way. Um, BOP works well in sports cars, but like you said, Chris, ACO doesn't seem to get it right. ACO doesn't seem to get anything right, do they? Uh, they've got the same problem the FIA's got. I think they're um, sort of... There's, there's a group of people that have been there a long time making decisions based uh, perhaps more on politics than than on, on more sensible <laughs> pursuits. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about the... Oh, we can ramp up the clarity a bit, bring out the rain there. Yeah, I don't want that over the whole image, but we can... Let's Let's cheat and bring out bring out some of the rain because uh, no one believed me how uh, how horribly wet it was there you go well were we talking about politics oh god yeah I was getting into ACO politics let's uh, let's move swiftly on Hey guys, uh, not sure if uh, we're back or not. Um, I just had the stream drop out for some reason. Not really sure why that is. If anyone can let me know in chat if, if this is now live again, that'd be amazing. Unfortunately, I'm a bit... Uh, the stream lags. Uh, my replay of the stream lags about 30 seconds behind. So I've, I've got 30 seconds of vamping before I know if we're... Uh, if we're actually live or not, or if I'm just uh, making it up as we go along. Anyway, let's just assume that it's all working fine. Um, I can see you. Great, we're back. There, thanks guys. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to get a great, uh, great crop of this. Maybe we can bring in some of the background. Which, yeah, it just looks a bit wonky. Maybe we give up on that. Got Ferrari 250. We're going to have the same problem with that, though, as well. A terrible photo. Let's not worry about that. Let's get on to some Bentleys, because everybody everybody loves Bentleys. Because why wouldn't you? So, yeah, um, if anyone's watched, like, about half of my recent videos, I, I think I've ended up talking about the Speed 8 quite a lot. The VRC mod, obviously. Um, big catalyst for that. The, the R8 came out. A few days ago, I'll be publishing a video about that tomorrow. Um, that's the video that was supposed to go live today, but I just I ran out of time. Life getting in the way a little bit. Try not to crunch the blacks too much in this image. There's a lot of uh, shadow in the back of that Bentley. And we've got a huge amount of highlight there as well. So pull the whites back a little bit. Anyway, yeah, back to questions in chat. Sorry, guys, I uh, just ended up uh, losing the stream there. Not sure what happened. That crunch on the grill. Yeah, I think that's been there for years, Jerry, on the, the Ferrari 250. Uh, I've seen, seen it in lots of photos. I don't know the story behind it. Is the VRC Bentley a good mod? I really like it. There's, the caveat is that the VRC tyres... They seem to take a bit of a different direction to a lot of the other Assetto Corsa cars, particularly the Kunos ones and whoop, the Kunos ones and well, most other mods, to be quite honest with you. And they feel very slippy, particularly at low speed, which can be tricky to get hold, uh, to get around. Uh, you know, if you like them, they're great. Uh, if you don't, you'll hate it. Uh, you know, if you've driven their Indy cars or their Formula One cars, then you get a kind of sense of, of how it's going to behave. But I think these new prototypes are, are the best things they've done. I've, I've enjoyed driving the Bentley uh, and I've enjoyed driving the Audi even more, I think, uh, over the last couple of days. Sadly, I didn't get a chance to do it over the weekend because I, I was busy with uh, this kind of thing. Now, this is a um, a car I've never heard of before, but it's, um, if I refer to my notes, it's a Riffard Renault Tank, apparently. But if you search Renault Tank, you get all of the, you know, the sort of 1930s tanks that Renault made for, for France during the, the war effort. So 
I couldn't find a lot of information about this. I must admit, I didn't really try all that hard, but... Bizarre looking thing. You can change the tyres with Content Manager. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Um, I'm not sure what cars you'd put on it. Um, obviously there's the... The RSS tyres, the 2004 GT1s, would be broadly similar, I guess. There's nothing... There are no GT cars in Assetto Corsa from that era, are there? There's, the, uh, there's a GT1 Maserati, isn't there? I don't know. If anyone can think of a, a good tyre to swap out for, then, uh, you know, I'm all ears on that one. Let's move on from this Riffard because I've got nothing interesting to say about it. To be fair, I've not got a lot of interesting to say about a lot of these um, pre-war cars. That's not really my area of expertise. So yeah, I'd, I'd switched over to the the 150 to 600 by this point, and uh, yeah, I was just sort of trying to keep it at the wide end because I was trying to do panning shots in front as the cars came across in front of me, but ended up much preferring the the wider shots. Let's try and get that at least vertical. So, yeah, I don't know anything about this car. It's a BMW Roadster of some description, but... If anyone actually knows anything about any of these cars, do, do shout, because... Uh, I'm all for learning. I know a little bit about some of the, some of the Bentleys we've got coming up. Just because because Bentley... Man, it was wet. <laughs> right, let's uh, let's not get too too bogged down in some of these cars and get into some Bentleys. Lots of Bentleys. Um, you know what? We are. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I was going to start skipping on because I was getting bored, but but I'm not. I'm going to uh, pay more attention to chats. What I'm going to do? I'll do the tire swap. I've done engines. You might as well. Yeah. Uh, RSS GT pack. Yeah, that's what I was suggesting, Mike. Um, they're from the same years. Uh, Bradley, I'm using a Canon 5DS, which isn't the best sports camera in the world. It's uh, it's a really great DSLR. Uh, it was the, the sort of top of the range of the 5D series for... I don't, I don't know if it is now. I don't keep up with these things so much anymore. Uh, but it doesn't have, you know, you'd be better off with a, a 5D Mark IV for uh, sports stuff. You know, you just see, rattle off more shots a bit quicker. But it does the job. Uh, it's got a pretty, uh, pretty small memory buffer because it's 50 megapixel images. So, you know, you just, if you try and rattle off five, five images, even with like the fastest compact flash card in the world, uh, it just fills up the buffer and you, you have to wait. So yeah, it's not really designed as a sports camera. And I didn't buy it as a sports camera. I just, you know, keep ending up at racetracks. So, you know, I'm going to take pictures. <laughs> oh, no, I just want to get onto the... Yeah, we go. This is... I've got, I've got some blower Bentleys. Let's do, let's do the blower Bentley. Um, because that's the important Bentley. I don't think it actually won Le Mans the blower, did it? But it's just so... Such an iconic, ridiculous car. Well, I think so, anyway. I don't want to crunch the blacks too much. See, yeah, again, lots of shadow, because we're, we're facing into the light a little bit here. This is standing in front of the house... At this stage, I think. That's a car. None of this, uh, you know, roofs. Roofs are, are unnecessary, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm actually going to save you guys a bit of uh, repetitiveness. There are lots of very similar, you know, pictures of like four and a half and six and a half litre Bentleys. Oh, we will do the... Uh, we'll do the Speed 8 because... I think you guys would crucify me if I didn't. Uh, enjoy Seattle. Oh, um, man, chat's going quickly again. What's my favourite picture? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> haven't seen it yet. There's uh, there's some cool ones of uh, 
a bit later on are some of the Formula One cars, which are pretty cool. I was totally unprepared for the Volkswagen IDR coming past. So I was, set, I was doing sort of, these are all at like 180th of a second. You know, they're pretty slow, uh, slow shutter speeds for fast moving cars, but it was the wet and I wanted to capture some of the, the spray and the, the sort of drama of it a bit. And I sort of figured I'd get vaguely sharp images. But uh, yeah, that's not, let's straighten up with the poles, not with the car. So yeah, when the uh, Volkswagen IDR came past at you know 150 miles an hour, because that thing accelerates like nothing on earth. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit a uh, bit caught out by that. My picture of the IDR, my picture one singular of the IDR is atrocious. Did everyone watch the IDR uh, run from Saturday? That's that's impressive I, I wasn't prepared for how impressed i'd be seeing it in in person because you know obviously at Goodwood you can you, you're, you're just a few feet away from the track and just watching that thing accelerate out of the the second corner just ooh, that thing is a serious piece of equipment you know whatever you think about electric cars and i know they're a divisive thing amongst motorsport fans it's hard not to be impressed by by that particular beast and it's hard for me not to be impressed by this particular beast. I, I must admit, one of my apps, highlights of the year this year is being in um, Pora Card for the Bentley win, being up on the podium. That was uh, that was pretty special. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and play that down. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna try and play it cool. That was really really amazing. As a uh, as a bit of a Boatley fan, what am I doing? Anyway, yeah, I'm going to skip over all these. You know, there's just more and more classic Bentleys and the old Fiat. God, that thing's ridiculous. 14 litre <laughs> land speed record car. Anyone into, into bikes? I'm not really, but there we go. We got that. Let's uh, catch up with chat a bit. I'll pass that Bentley had enough a blown headlight unforgivable. Yeah, Mike, I mean, you know, it's not gonna pass any sort of concourse inspection, is it? IDR halls, yeah, great piece of machinery. We need that we need race room to go full release with that. Yeah, I drove the the IDR I, I drove it uh, a few months ago in race room when they gave me they gave me access to do the group C thing. They they had to give me access to the full builds. So they were testing out the IDR at the time and now it's been public I'm, I'm sure i can talk about it a bit more but by god that thing's great to drive i mean i took it around bathurst because it's a hill isn't it <laughs> you know i know uh race room's got a uh, hill climb but bathurst seemed right by god that thing's great uh They've done a they've done a really good job with it. Uh, you know, Lord knows how how accurate it is. But I was talking to uh, again talking about to Simon about some of the physics side of things, and he's talking about the, the downforce numbers that that thing produces, and it's just on another planet. So yeah, if there are any bike people in chat, um, if you let me know what that is, it's a Suzuki. It's probably a Suzuki. I'm, I'm safe in uh, safe in making that prediction. Yeah, unsurprisingly, there weren't too many bikes running on the Saturday because uh, we can see the weather. But it looks good. That whatever it is, that's a Honda. That's not. That's not. That's not sharp enough. We're not going to con continue with that. Ah, W one two five. This is a beastly, beastly car. You missed the blowers. Yeah, sorry, Space Monkey. I, I'll, I'll go and uh, I'll go and do another. No, I won't. I'm not going back. There are too too many Bentleys. There were <laughs> there were too many Bentleys. <laughs> I'm just trying to rattle through some of these to get to the Formula One cars because I know that's what everyone wants to see. Really, stick with what's popular. Should have clicked I clickbaited it with a Formula One car in the t in the uh, thumbnail image, didn't I? So I've got, to, got to at least deliver slightly on that promise. This is a Formula One car, though, isn't it? 
one two five. I think they were knocking about in the the pre war days against the auto unions and and the like. I want one of these in AC to race around the Donington thirty seven circuit. That I can't remember who made it. God, that's bad. Name has completely slipped my mind. But I really really enjoy the mod. It's just a, a lack of thirties Formula One cars to drive around it. I don't know what this is. Uh, probably a well, it's a G, clearly a uh, Mercedes GT car of the era. But again, if anyone if anyone can add anything, uh, <laughs> any sort of actual detail to some of these cars, um, particularly the ones that I'm struggling with, is it a 300 SLR? It might be. I don't, I don't really know my. I'm not much of a Mercedes guy, actually. And the crop on this is uh, hasn't worked. This might be a uh, a no show. I was I was sticking with the seven uh, the one fifty to six hundred lens, and I shouldn't have. I should have swapped over to the the wider lens for this stuff. But oh well, I didn't mistakes made so this is a this is a blue car <laughs> i can't add any more than that so we will we will do a quick edit on this and get onto the some of the stuff i know more about not that quick though because that was crap we're going a bit far now this is this is a car that, that everyone should know if they know their uh their Indy 500 history. It's uh, Lola, obviously. It's the Lola 90, T90, probably T90. I think, uh, I'm guessing, it's certainly in the livery of, but I'm guessing it's the chassis that Graham Hill won in, um, in that controversial finish where Jim Clark finished in front of him but was a lap down, but the race had been cancelled several times, well, not cancelled, red flagged several times during the running, so they were pretty unsure about the lap count. So Graham Hill got his Indy 500 win anyway, but I think there were two or three people that legitimately could lay claim one way or another to having won that race. Such a cool car. Such a cool car. I'd, uh, I'd tell you what, some uh, 60s uh, indie cars or indie 500 cars in iRacing wouldn't go amiss definitely wouldn't go amiss for me anyway starting to get into the formula one stuff i think this wasn't the main formula one batch actually this is uh, i think it's a celebration of march so you had the was it March? Yeah. Well, this is a a March anyway. It's a seven two one, I think. Peterson and Lauda. Well, that's clearly the Peterson car. Again, you can never, you know, unless you look up the specific chassis numbers and stuff, you can never tell if they're, you know, repaints or whatever. Most of them are kept in historic liveries, but it's not, not always the case. Might have been rubbish weather, but it makes for good pictures. At least there's a bit of drama in it. There we go. More Leighton House. Are they both the... Uh... Yeah, it's a bit soft, that. That's not good enough. Oh, and that's a tight crop. Bad times. Prepare yourself for how bad the photo of... Uh... Hey Sam, man, you're there Sunday as well. Yeah, um, I had to go at about two o'clock just as the weather was starting to clear up a little bit, which was a shame. Uh, Dylan, yeah, completely agree. Historic stuff in iRacing. The, the problem is I think they sort of... Yeah, this is what I got of the IDR, by the way, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think they they dipped the toe in the water a bit with, uh, with some of the historic stuff and never really fully commit to it. I'd, I'd love more of the the GTP and GTO cars, you know, one of each feels like, given that the whole point of the GTP era and same with the Group C era was the diversity of cars, the interesting stuff, the different approaches, just having one GTP car and one GTO, it just feels really, 
really like a missed opportunity but again i i understand the the, the commercial reasonings for that it just uh it just sucks <laughs> Yeah, not the best photo in the world, uh, but as I said, I was taking photos of, uh, you know, Bentleys and motorcycles going past at like 45 miles an hour. And then this thing rockets past it, you know, <laughs> was not prepared for that at all. Speaking of uh, things I wasn't prepared for, I really enjoyed there's a little brief rally and, and drift car segment and this was pretty cool i was on the inside of turn one and two here and while i'm not the biggest rally fan in the world this was great fun to watch i want to get some of that that water trail in the in the image still maybe crop it there nope nope that was bad yeah we're just gonna have to put it in the middle i think a boring crop Yeah, it shows how insane the driving positions were. Yeah, you know, you go back to the the Leighton House. I mean, even as late as this is the 1990 car, I think. Uh, you know, it wasn't until 1994, 95, post Senna accident, they started sort of covering off the, the cockpit stuff. But, you know, you go back to the 70s and it's, it's actually slightly better. <laughs> you know, that being said, you know, the car's made of aluminium and steel and magnesium and all sorts of other flammable things so i'd take the i'd take the latent house any day even though it's a, a new e-car which means that no human being can fit in it and uh you know fast but fragile i think probably uh summed that car up as it did with a lot of the uh the red bulls and mclarens so, yeah, just a little bit more in the shadows Well, I'll tell you what, um, you know, lots of people were understandably taking it quite easy due to the weather conditions. But but the rally and drift guys were uh, were going at it full beans. So this was this is what I was talking about earlier with having the the wrong choice of lenses with me. I took the uh, 24 to 70 and my 150 to 600 with me, which meant that the 150 to 600 was too much to much 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 too long for for this particular location but the 70 was uh, 70 wasn't long enough so luckily this is a 50 megapixel camera so uh you can get away with some pretty insane crops and it's not really a problem uh how do you see wec game or dlc coming in the near future oh sorry do i see a wec game well i'm reliably informed that let me find the right way to say this. It doesn't get me in trouble. There was an announcement from someone that GTR 3 had the official WEC license. That turned out to be a little bit hopeful. But I'm reliably informed by some sources that are quite close to um, the developers that, you know, they're, they're pretty convinced it's on the WEC license. So... I know there's still the whole, is it going to happen, will it, won't it thing. But, you know, there are some people I respect within the industry that are pretty convinced that, yeah, OK, they've made some slight, slightly foolish decisions, perhaps, when it comes to how they've promoted GTR 3. Or maybe even not foolish decisions. They, they Their hand's been forced a bit by some of the, the commercial realities they find themselves in. But, yeah, if that happens, great. Uh, I think everyone wants to see GTR 3. Uh, I sure as hell do. And if they've got the WEC license, all the better. Hopefully, they'll be able to keep that through for the hypercar era because that's going to be far more exciting than LMP1, I think. But not as exciting as uh, a mid-70s Ford Capri. Because I don't think anything is as exciting as uh, a mid-70s Ford Capri. I actually... Again, I'm going to say something controversial. I prefer the Mark II Capri, but that's because my dad had one. And it's, uh, you know, there's some nostalgia there. I think the Mark One's probably a better looking car. Uh, you know, if, you, if I try to be objective about it, but. 
Who cares about objectivity? Ah, what a car. What a car. Speaking of which, yeah, this is just... The lens was just too short. And the 150 was too long. Yeah, that's not that sharp either. Okay, let's give up on the... Uh... <sighs> it's a good-looking car, though, isn't it? The Renault 5. And Renault 21's a bit soft as well. Oh, no, I did catch it in the middle. See, that's, that's one of the... It's a good demonstration of what can happen when you're panning fast. I mean, these guys were fully committed because it's quite a wide lens. You can see it's pin sharp in the middle, but both ends of the car are a bit blurred with the motion. So we're not going to do too much with that. But here we go into the... This is the Trans Am uh, Audi Quattro. So it's Trans Am followed by the IMSA GTO one. These are just spectacular. They were fully committed as well. And that's that's saying something, you know, taking a rally car on a tarmac stage in the wet is sort of bread and butter stuff. But, you know, this is uh, this is impressive. You see, I was sort of trying to push the limits a bit with uh, shutter speeds. Yeah, I was down to one sixtieth of a second so I could get these uh, panning shots because, the you know, you can see the background's not particularly attractive. So I was trying to blur it out as much as possible. Renault 5 Turbo, my grandpa, her grandma had a Renault 5 until it flooded in the floods we had. Uh, you know, I went to um, Malta a couple of years ago and was surprised how many Renault 5s there still were. In the Obviously in the UK, the weather's like this in the picture the whole time, so everything like that is rusted through uh, and, you know, they, they're long gone. But Malta, where it's, you know, nice all year round, was uh, loads of Renault 5s, loads of like Mark 1 and 2 Golfs and... Peugeot 205s and stuff. Oh, it was great. I did never got so excited over. It's not even the hot hatch variants, just the the normal ones. Great documentary about the IMSA one on YouTube. The unfair advantage. I haven't seen that, Baza. That's uh, man. That's uh, I'm gonna go watch that when uh, when I finish this stream. Actually, that is right up my right up my street. Didn't the I think the Trans Am one totally dominated as well, didn't it? I think it won about two thirds of the you know it had a sort of Ferrari F two thousand and four type season. Yeah, I need a bit more in the shadows there. It's a bit. Ah, oh, good looking car. But I prefer this one because who doesn't prefer this one? Again, we'll go for a slightly tighter crop because I wish I, I wish I still had my 70 to 200, but I traded it in for the longer lens because I was doing more and more motorsport photography. And most of the time you're at somewhere like Silverstone or wherever and you're bloody miles away. It's, it's rare that you, know, you get to actually be this close. At least in the UK anyway. Fan access looks pretty good at most of the when I'm watching the IMSA, the, the Weather Tech Sports Car Championship. You know, most of most of those events look like you get pretty uh, decent photo ops because there's not. I think you know you go to somewhere like Silverstone, and the, the, you know the reality is that Formula One going there sort of made it a bit hostile for spectators compared to what it used to be. But I, I've whinged about that before, so I'm not going to repeat myself too much. I know, I know lots of people like Silverstone uh, and I really enjoyed going there for WEC last year. Uh, the new wing complex definitely made it nicer and the new paddock areas are better for access, particularly in WEC events where they have a park ferme in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the paddock and it's publicly accessible. You don't have to buy an extra ticket to do any of that. So that's that's very cool. And man, this is a cool car. And I'd like, uh, there is a, an Assetto Corsa mod, but I think it's a rip, isn't it? Has, any, has anyone tried it? Has it got even close to reasonable physics? It's about how Audi showed there was a substitute for cubic inches. Yeah, that was probably a fairly unpopular opinion at the time in uh, in the United States. Historic race events have quickly become one of my favourite race events, just because of how close you can get to everything. Yeah, I agree, Dylan. Uh, I really enjoy going to the historic masters uh, at brands i try and do that every year i couldn't go this year which is a shame but um yeah this is a mustang 
clearly uh 95 daytona car i think i, I looked it up because my knowledge of the rolex 24 is pretty limited you know from that period of time you know you can, couldn't watch it in the well you probably could watch it in the uk somehow it wouldn't have been you wouldn't have had the access you have these days though i, I was 11 at the time as well so you know the amount of uh my knowledge of motorsport came from whatever was printed in in autosport really so and what was on tv so it wasn't until much later in my life that i uh had a any idea about what was going on in the states which is probably why i find it so fascinating now so uh, just straighten that up a little bit that's a good looking car though don't know anything about it so i think it's a roush run car but well you know what this one is it's a blurry rs5 it's doing the lord's work there gluten-free pimping out the uh, the discord server I should probably pay reference to it as well. If, if if any of you guys haven't joined the Discord and want to get involved in some of our community races, then uh, then do so. We're not hyper competitive. We we build them as social races. We've got guys of all sorts of uh, different ability levels there. We've got uh, some absolute beginners all the way through to people like Chuck does hot laps. If you know him, who is, as the name implies, a very fast hot lapper. A uh, very clean and fair racer, I should say, as well, from, from what I've seen. So, and of course, everything in between. So usually people, it's very rare that people don't get people of their own sort of ability level to fight against. So, yeah, if you're not a member of the Discord, join the link that Gluten Free just posted and request a member role from one of us, probably Gluten Free, because I'm busy, uh, <laughs> busy doing this right now. Anyway, moving on from DTM to, uh, oh, yeah, Euro Mustang. Uh, Euro Mustang? What am I talking about? Euro um, NASCAR. Yeah, not my thing. That's a bit more like it. I'm going to uh, struggle to find a crop on this one, I think, because if the, uh, the front's in focus, the back isn't. That's okay. Adds a bit of drama to the shot. But if we go too tight with it, it's going to look a bit weird, I think. I want to crop out this near hay bale. And then we've got this horrible building in the back. Yeah, it's just a... It's got a lot of elements of a, of a nice photo, but it's not really coming together. Maybe we need to get rid of some of that gap at the top. Just cut down on some of the confusing elements in it. Yeah, that's better. It's a serious car, isn't it? Another one uh, where Audi were showing that cubic inches weren't the uh, weren't the only way to go. Now we're onto some uh, some drift cars. I think I should make a dirt league. Yeah, I. <laughs> I'm struggling with dirt because when they upgraded the force feedback, it broke my uh, force, force feedback completely. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's problematic <laughs> because my wheel doesn't work with it at all. It's my own fault. I've got an open sim wheel, so, you know, these things happen. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get a crop out of this, but there you go. It's a G uh, GTR drift car. There's a Supra as well. Probably more likely to get a crop out of that. Not sure what the crop's going to be though, because uh, again, wrong lens should have uh, shouldn't have abandoned the old seventy to two hundred so quickly. Yes, that's not even sure. Oh, we've got a lit. We're sharp in front of the wheel. But... Oh well, we're here. Let's edit it. If I remember from the commentary, this uh, new Supra's uh, had a. The old Mark IV Super engine put in it for added nostalgia, presumably. But <laughs> dude was pretty committed when he uh, when he came past. So I tell you what, I'm not a drift guy, but man, all the drift stuff was great. I, I was really disappointed that it was raining because when I went over to the drift arena. 
well drifting in the rain is uh slow <laughs> you know it's not quite as as sort of violent and ridiculous as it normally is but man it was impressive to watch uh, my, oh i haven't interacted with chat in ages uh sorry guys uh road america's great trek to visit um yeah i'd love to go to road america it's sort of on on i think the three i'd really want four i really want to hit obviously road atlanta i'd love to do petit le mans uh and i want to hit uh i want to get over to the states at some point to do the double header the imsa double header of um most sport and watkins Glen, because i've got to, i've got to uh i've got to do watkins at some point in my life haven't i still shocking that uh sims don't make direct drive more accessible yeah i think uh with the code masters games you're, ne you're never going to get support for something like an open sim wheel uh sadly metal mike it's just part and parcel of it i had real trouble with the um, f1 games last year managed to get it um andrew pedal do you have a background in photography yeah i uh, i went to university did a degree in, degree in photography and became a commercial still life photographer which meant i photographed products and stuff and things that don't move so this whole uh moving cars thing uh is a little bit alien to me but i i, I muddle my way through yeah hks liveries it, it looks good. I think uh, Rebellion Racing tried to do a similar thing with uh, uh, the LMP cars this year, and they looked good as well. I know, I know that was a pretty divisive livery, but I thought they looked great in person, if nothing else. A lot of street circuits are covered in fencing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty uh, pretty standard, sadly. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I've not, not visited any American tracks, but it's... Up, uh, I I would love to do Watkins Glen's kind of the 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 big one for me, but you know Long Beach, just pretty much anywhere that uh, the sports car championship, whether Tech Sports Car Championship goes to, would be good for me. I like the look of this new Evora GT4. I think that's a, a tidy looking car. I've always liked the Evora. Uh, there's there's a bunch of them in in AC. As the the GTC and the which is basically a GT4 car anyway, isn't it? Similar spec, I think. It's a proper Lotus livery there as well. I think we need to get a bit more darkness in this shot. We need some of the drama. These are all really quick edits, guys. I'm not. I'm not super paying attention because I keep getting distracted by chat and I want to kind of rattle through some of these a bit. I don't want to dwell on I don't want to dwell on the same images for too long because I don't want people to get bored. But you'll never get bored with uh, an Escort Cosworth, will you? Uh, Sierra Cosworth, sorry. Maybe you would. My first scale electric set was two Sierra RS500s. The Texaco one. The black one. In fact, I was watching um, Gluten Free Sim Racer's stream the other day over on Twitch, and he uh, he was driving the R Factor mod, which I've, I've just gone and got. Um, and I think I'm going to do a video. I'll try and do a video of that later in the week. You know, dri driving my first scale electric car. That's a proper sort of clicky title, isn't it? It's uh, so cynical, aren't I? What happened there? I think that's a proper looking racing car. I mean, you know, I'm a I'm an eighties kid, so I guess this looks right to me just because of uh sort of social conditioning, but I think it's a good looking uh, good looking piece of kit. Not as good as that though. I told you there'd be more uh more Lance here action. My goal is to do my own triple crown. Is that to visit the three triple crown events or just uh, to to win the Monaco Grand Prix and the Indy 500, etc.? Because I don't know how old you are, Andrew, but, you know, it's it's a pretty tough ask if you're you're over the age of like 11 and trying to set that goal right now. Laguna Seca is also a stunning track to visit. Yeah, Christ, I, this is the problem. You know, if I had to pick like three circuits in the US to go to, one, they're all hundreds of or thousands of miles apart and two i'd never be able to narrow the list down yeah laguna sake has always looked like it has good uh trackside access
But I guess, you know, if I was going to go over for an event, it would either be Sebring or um, Petit Le Mans. Probably Petit Le Mans, actually. I've had uh, a nice guy on, on YouTube, I sadly forget his handle, um, has offered several times, you know, you know, or, you know if you want, want us to put you up for the Petit Le Mans, you know, you're welcome to come over. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I'll just... Uh, just finding the time and you know finances to go and fly halfway around the world for a racing event because uh that ain't gonna be cheap should uh really focus on just doing the european events that i've still yet to do first i think maybe if kunos get off their ass and do uh intercontinental gt i'll be able to and the SRO Esport GT series goes to the Intercontinental GT events. Maybe I can uh, tag along with those. That'd be great. Yeah, quite fancy that because I get to tick off um, Suzuka and Bathurst as well. And Kyle Army. That'd be all right. Yeah, okay. Go. Everyone needs to go and lobby Kunos to do Intercontinental GT. Did the 155 DTM make an appearance? Yeah, it did actually. I thought I had some photos of it. I might just, I might be a bit out of sequence here, mate. Uh, Festival of Speed, so awesome. I live six miles from Goodwood. Need to get you on our group, Simsport. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, hit me up. Drop me a, a a message on either Discord or Twitter. Or can you message me on YouTube? I don't know how any of this works. I'm really bad at this stuff. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit away from uh, from Goodwood. I'm about an hour to the north and woke woking basically. So uh, I'm in that part of the world. Should go for the Monterey Historics. Yeah, man. Monterey Historics. Uh, I, I watch uh, the stream. Uh, this year and i always see the pictures and stuff and it just looks great although you don't get too many of the uh, north american historic races come across to events like uh, the festival of speed for uh, or the masters historic championships and stuff because obviously the costs of getting everything over to europe is is insane and you know i i guess it's probably pretty nerve-wracking shipping a uh, a priceless irreplaceable museum piece in a container you know around the world so uh, mr stewart in his uh championship winning matra so i guess that's a 69 car he's always a class act mr stewart he's uh driving with his son's paul and Paul, you obviously all know from motorsport and whoever the other son is who isn't in motorsport that no one can remember his name, myself included. Yeah, I'm not enjoying this crop. We can do better. Don't want to go too tight because it's not the sharpest photo in the world. We're, uh, yeah, focused a bit too far to the front of the car. Life's short. Move on, Chris. It's only a Formula One car. Speaking of which, that's a um, Di Tommaso, isn't it? The Frank Williams run car. Which I think it's a uh, decent looking car, but I don't think it was. It wasn't very competitive. No, I think uh, Frank did better with the marches beforehand, and obviously, uh, I don't think Piers' courage survived that. Yeah, I think that was the year he died at, at Zanvoort as well. So, a car that's uh, got some history to it. Certainly, clearly not that chassis. But anyway, moving on before we start going down that bloody topic again, right? <laughs> Now we got Lando next. Chris, a cheeky plug in my stream. Yeah, well, I thought I'd. Uh, I'd I always ask gluten free if he wants me to, uh, you know, give his stream a shout out. He's like, nah, 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 don't worry about it. But, you know, I'm live now, so uh, no one can hold me back. I'm long past the age to be a racing driver. Yeah, aren't, aren't we all, Andrew? <laughs> Went to Rolex reunion last year in 2010. Uh, 
too young to remember it in 2010. Uh, Rolex Reunions, the the Historics 24, isn't it? That's that'd be a cool one to go to. Now that's a moist pick. They're all moist picks, CJ. They're, I was I was soaked through, mate. But that's yeah, it's Lando and the the McLaren M8. I would sell my firstborn child to to have a go in that car. There aren't too many. Uh, I was about to say there aren't too many historic motorsport cars that I'd say that about, but I think I'd genuinely say that about every single one. I, lo I love all of them. But McLaren Can-Am. The Bruce and Denny show and all of that. This is, yeah, it's just... That's, that's a proper car. That is a proper car. And I'd love a, a really high-end, modern mod for ac you know i don't mind the, the the i don't mind the the vintage oh, what's it called it's gone the vintage sports car mod uh that's a conversion from the r factor one which was a conversion from gt legends there you go gt legends mod i knew i'd get there in the end i, I don't mind it but i mean it's not it's not up there with with the best of mods and yeah, RSS need to stop doing mid two thousand GT cars and photo and do a Can M mod. There you go. That's my my hot take on sim racing for the day. The other one is that early eighties Ligiers look great. Bit less controversial that one probably. That is something that's missing from Formula One now is that sort of diversity in the looks of the cars. You know, you compared that, I think, is that the 82 car? I did make some notes about about some of these I'm less known about. It's the 79, it's the JS11, I think, isn't it? Um, but, you know, you look at the difference between that and the Ferraris of the era and, you know, then the, the, the Turbo Renaults that started to come about. It's just everyone had a different approach and it's just everything in formula one trends towards the same ideas these days and i know i know i argued against opening up the regulations in in that stupid video i made the other week but it would make the cars look cooler that's for sure answers on a postcard um as to what this is other than a blue bugatti because i've got no idea it's got some uh, some good camber on the front though, hasn't it? How's that for your setup? That's a uh... can you imagine driving that in a grand that sort of thing in a Grand Prix? I mean, look at those suspension arms. Look at the. <laughs> proper bravery beautiful car though as is this one which uh, I put in the uh, the image but I've uh, let the highlights get a bit out of control I notice but you have to have the bright thumbnails seem to work really well on YouTube it's weird a lot of historic sponsored by various bourgeois watch brands. That's accurate. Chitty chatty bing bong. Yeah. They... <laughs> Type 38B. There you go. See, this is why I ask chat, because people know what they're talking about. Um, whereas this is a Jaguar I-Pace, which is... Uh... Has anyone watched any of the, the I-Pace championship? I haven't. It's... Uh... I'm reliably informed that it's a bit hit or miss, but you know, it wasn't. I must admit, after a bunch of Formula One cars went past and then a, a Jaguar I Pace, it wasn't the most exciting uh, visual display. And the car that went past after was much more impressive. Looks quite mean, though. But, you know. Nick Heidfeld, quick Nick, lived up to his name with the Mahindra, so I took that past uh, immediately afterwards. So I'm, 
of course, completely forgot about the eye pace straight away. Because I think that I, I like the look of the the Gen 2 Formula E car. I think it's a, a bit out there, maybe. But, and, you know, given that I was just, you know, 20 minutes ago, I was praising how the you know, blower Bentley is a proper looking racing car. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm uh, all over the shop a bit, but, you know, Mahindra's not my uh, my favourite team, and I think that livery is a complete mess. But on some of the cars where they've employed a graphic designer rather than um, random number generator, yeah, I think I, I like the look of the the Gen Two Formula E car. What have we got next? Ah, it's the twenty twelve Red Bull. I should probably check the uh, chat before I get into that. Must be back, uh, for bank corners. Yeah, positive gamber. Uh, my wife's granddad drove a Bugatti and he was a chauffeur. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, you take, did you take the chauffeur around Brooklands? Yeah, I don't think... Uh, I agree, Metal Mike. I don't think the Gen 2 Formula E car is too forced. I mean, it is a little bit futuristic. I mean, the design hasn't entirely come from a place of function. Some of it is from form which is sadly lacking in a lot of modern racing cars. You know, I don't I don't mind a bit of the artistic flair. You know, at the end of the day, you know, in a in a series that is never going to win on noise, you've got to have something to sort of stir the passion a bit. So I think the is it the RB8, the 2012 car was one of the better looking cars that year because that was the year of all the stupid uh wang noses. I mean, everyone remembers how the Caterham looked. Well, just just a war crime that was that car, but uh, Red Bull managed to sort of mitigate some of the the drop nose ridiculousness. Still not the best looking machine they've ever produced, but far from the worst that year. Um, I think DC took the car up the hill on Saturday, but I'm pretty sure that's Patrick Friesacker. Who's uh, giving the guy next to me the eye? Which is good because he was pushing me around a lot. He wasn't uh, wasn't a very conscientious uh, personal space. So I'm getting confused by uh, what I'm doing here. It's pretty complex stuff moving around these sliders. Yeah, Red Bull livery does does look good. Certainly the matte paint. Looks like they dipped it in white, stuck on some black sponsor stickers and called it good. Yeah, yeah, they, they've not... Mahindra really haven't ever got it right on the livery, but it looks far worse on the Gen 2 car than it did on the Gen 1. Which is a shame, you know, I was a big fan of um, Nick Heidfeld through his Formula 1 career. And um, Felix, Felix Rosenquist last year as well, uh, I think he... He probably lost a bunch of races because he kept putting it in the barriers and stuff, but he was fast. And, you know, I'm enjoying watching his uh, progress in in IndyCar as well. Uh, he's winning the rookies now, thankfully, because um, Ferrucci, uh, after his Indy 500 uh, performance, I think was, uh, was looking to be on top of that one. Um, as a European, we can't be having that. <laughs> Let's let's move on. I'm, I'm doing controversy again. Nothing controversial about. I'm I'm guessing that's Josh Hill, um, Graham's grandson, Damon's son, driving the the Lotus Forty Nine there. Um, Porsche, not Mahindra. What? You've lost me. That's a Mahindra. Oh, the Porsche livery for the FE looks like a joke. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm only read. Uh, I'm only reading half of the the chat. Sorry, guys. Um. Yeah, uh, Andrew. I think it's a good. Uh, it's a good blend between a sort of prototype and uh, and everything else. Yeah, I've I've approved. Yeah, <laughs> Metal Mike, your your message was caught by the spam filter, but I've uh, I've approved that. <laughs> so I appro I approve of that message. Even if uh, it gets me told off on YouTube. 
I know I've said it a few times, but uh, that's a proper looking race car. <laughs> I never liked the the high wings. I think the Lotus Forty Nine in the following year, when they had the sort of integrated wing on the back, uh, was was a better looking car. Um, so I'm guessing this is a sixty nine car, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Because by seventy, they had the proper integrated wing on the back like, this isn't my i'm not my most knowledgeable about this particular period of formula one but a hill helmet in a lotus 49 uh, looks right to me that's for sure and we're just a little bit too contrasty there aren't we now this is a car i enjoyed seeing um and it's, it's got the right person driving it we've got rubens um back driving the Braun GP car and I don't think I noticed it at the time because you know he was going by quickly but he's wearing his 2009 helmet he's wearing the the Braun uh, the helmet he wore that year with the you know the Virgin Braun sponsorship uh, my uh, excuse me my uh, the focus is on the front of the car so that's a bit soft I was never a fan of the uh, the hub covers I'm glad they they banned those just because I think they look stupid. <laughs> but I did like the, the brawn livery. I uh, I put a bet. The only time I've ever bet, bet on sports in my life. I put a bet on uh, after the brawn testing thing. Because I think we all knew what was coming after that first first test in Barcelona. When they turned up. Well they missed the first test didn't they. But the second test in Barcelona. But I can't remember who I went through. But I had my bet cancelled. Because it was the same year that Bernie uh, it, it said he was going to introduce the medals for podium positions rather than points. And whoever I placed the bet with, you know, Betfair or Bet365 or someone like that, I can't remember, uh, cancelled all the bets by saying, oh, well, when we, uh, we gave the odds, it was based on the old point system, not the new medal system. And I thought, yeah, yeah, well done. If if you pay, did you pay Bernie to come up with the stupid medals idea? Might be me being cynical, but Bernie rarely comes out with uh, the crazy things for nothing. Uh, still love those high wings. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. They weren't popular at the time, were they, Dylan? Uh, I think they were very unpopular with uh, with Hill and Rent and and the like. And there are a number of accidents caused by them. So, you know, it was one of those quirky things that looking back on, I don't think it looks too bad. It was quite stark at the time. It's just a bit strange because, you know, you look at the 2012 cars and they're never going to go through that. You know, those stupid noses are never going to have that same. Well, actually, I quite like the look of that thing that the high wings do. Um. And I'm not convinced that the limousine era of Formula One is going to have quite the same nostalgia to it. Although uh, that, I think this is 2017 Mercedes, does look pretty uh, pretty sorted in the wet there, doesn't it? It's Valtteri doing his, uh, his thing. Yeah, no Lewis, unsurprisingly. <laughs> that is a, uh, tell you what, Whatever you say about Mercedes, that paintwork photographs really nicely. <laughs> Hats off to their paint department. You uh you counting out the likes, gluten free. Ah yeah, as a uh championship winning car. Mind you the last one was as well, wasn't it? So I think, I'm guessing, this is the 2001 Ferrari? Is that the F2001? I think that was the point where Ferrari were mucking about with their naming conventions because uh, the previous car might have been the F2000, but before that it was, you know, like F320 and, and stupid things like that. So I always get a little bit confused with the Ferrari naming convention and identification through those times i remember they changed the wing colors from black to white in i think it was 2000 they did that and it was quite easy to sell because that's the point where ferrari started winning 
well, winning championships anyway. So I think it's pretty easy to sell the championship winning cars because they've got white wings. Obviously up until 2005 and then it all goes wrong, but you know, there's only so much you can do. I always thought the, the F2004 was sort of the the best looking of the the championship winning Ferraris. I, th I think the the sort of final evolution of those uh, of that particular format of of car, those two thousand and four cars were just ridiculous. Uh, so what is this then? So yeah, you got the black wings. So it's pre two thousands. 